Gospel of the Pantheon, Chapter 11, Elias Cork, Acolyte of Squalor, Verse 1. When Elias Cork left the Curtisarian Church, he had ample means to begin a new life, or at least for an immigrating commoner, he was uncommonly well funded. About ten years prior to making this trip, all the funds from the sale of his adopted parents' farm had been turned over to Elias. It turned out those funds would come very much in handy. Cork approached the front of the Cathedral of Squalor, feeling as though he were returning to the place he had just left. The outside of the cathedral building, anyway, looked identical to that of the Curtisarian Church. Cork entered through the large entry hall. He knew very well, from many years of experience, the layout of the cathedral. Straight ahead would be the Great Hall, to the right were the administrator offices, and to the left the archival offices, assuming, of course, that the rooms were all used in basically the same way. But it did not take long for Cork to determine that they were not. Elias first went to where the administrative offices ought to have been. Here, apparently, these rooms were being used as a general dumping ground for not particularly valuable and totally useless luxury goods. The offices were filled with rolled-up rugs and tapestries, large vases on pedestals, silver and copper scepters with semi-precious stones, and other such clutter. So, he next reversed course and tried the left side of the entry hall. In the first of what Elias thought was thought of as the archival offices, he saw three priests in red robes reclining in large, gaudy, red-tasseled chairs. There were a number of empty bottles around them. Two of them looked to be sleeping. The third appeared to be eating something from a bowl with his finger. No wonder they call this the Church of Squalor, thought Cork. Now that he had seen it firsthand, he was not at all sure he wanted anything to do with this place. This caused him to think back to the Curtisarian Kurt Cathedral that he had left, and to again feel the burn of resentment. Elias knew that his mastery of text was unmatched, and every time he reflected on the fact that he had not been permitted to achieve status in that church commensurate with his ability, he just wanted to jump up and down and scream in frustration. But that bridge was burned. He reminded himself that he was glad he had burned it. The sanctimonious spirituality policing really had been too much to possibly bear, and seeing how, as how Cork considered himself far too smart and talented to work as a laborer, or even as some sort of merchant's or tradesman's ap apprentice, he was going to have to find a way to make things work in this church, but before he could do that, he'd need to find someone who looked capable of processing a new recruit. You look lost, said a gravelly voice from behind Cork. Elias turned around and saw a man, mid-twenties maybe, unshaven but not bearded. This man wore the same style of red robe that he had already seen. It looked none too clean. You're right, said Cork, forcing a smile. I am lost. I'm looking for some sort of administrative office. Administrative office, huh? Well, there's a bishop's council office, but I doubt anybody's there yet. Well, what time does it normally open? asked Elias. <laughs> ha ha. Whenever someone goes in there, I guess. Uh, they. Whenever someone goes in there, I guess. They, I can't imagine why you'd want to go there. The only people who have offices are bishops, and they just go there when they want to change the scenery. It's not like they do anything specific there. Oh, said Elias. Are you looking to schedule a wedding or pay for some sort of licensing fee, something like that? You want the cashier. That's open. Actually, I'm interested in becoming an acolyte. This prompted the rather unhealthy-looking fellow to give Elias a once or twice over. You? You don't really seem like squalid material, to be honest. But if you got the fee, I'm sure you can find a bitch to take you on. I'm Olo, by the way. Elias, said the new arrival, offering his hand. Elias Cork. Olo shook it. What's in the bag? Asked Olo. Oh, my clothes and other personal items. I just reached Hamptonshire Shire City this morning. The boat dropped me off at the Northern Docks five days ago. Why, did you walk all the way from from there? You couldn't have come up the river this time of year. And where did you sail from to begin with? I crossed the channel from the coast of Portugal. And yeah, I walked from the docks here once I landed. Wow, you sure look clean for someone who's been camping out. Well, I cleaned up in a stream just outside of town and changed clothes. I figured I'd try to look nice. Elias then sighed as he looked at the squalid surroundings. I didn't really know what to expect or even how one becomes an acolyte, I guess. Apparently not, said Olo. Let's see if we can't get you acclimated here properly, Elias, because right now you are clearly out of your element. Well, I'd like to at least get started on the process. How much will this cost, and how do I find a bishop? Relax, Cork. That's lesson number one. You seem to be in some kind of hurry. So, let's get a drink or two in you. Three, probably. In fact, I'd better give you a full introduction to Squalor, because... You have to be the least squalid guy I've ever seen come through these doors. So, let's go put in some work in the wet room. I promise once we get some godliness in us, I'll 
fill you in on which bishops to try and which ones to avoid. Wolo headed off to the Great Hall, and Elias, having no other obviously better options, followed him. The hall was filled with long tables, just like the Great Hall in the Crusaderian Cathedral. Except for the front third of the room on the left, that area appeared to be devoted to alcohol. There were three long rows of tapped cakes of ale, mead, and heavy brown beer. The tables closest to these cakes were filled with people. The rest of the tables in the hall were empty. Olo led Elias to a group sitting at the table close to the far end of the rows of kegs. Hey, listen up, Herb. No, oh, sorry. Hey, listen up, Herb, Ula, Jurgen, Nathaniel, Ingrid, Sally, Goddard, Bert. Olo pointed to each red-robed person at the table as he named them. He went through the introduction very quickly, and Elias doubted he would remember a single one of the names. This is Elias Cork. He says he came here from Cross Channel to come and act like. Can you afford it? said one of the group. He's not cheap, you know, Elias. Who cares, said another. That's the important thing, is that the guy wants to be squalid. It's a very noble goal. The noble goals must be given their just due. Beer is inadequate given the occasion. It's time to start on some rum. I second that motion, said another. And we will need to smoke much plant, said the woman. That goes without saying, said Olo. In fact, who has a long pipe handy? Someone handed him one. Excellent. And a candle? Jorgen located a cup for Mr. Cork and pour him some rum. Candle? Anyone? Candle? Ooh, said Elias. I have that. And he fished one out of his knapsack. Bravo, said Olo. You may just have some squalor in you yet, my good man. Elias Cork woke up the next morning beside some girl in what looked, except for the unholy mess, just like a standard initiate's quarters in the Curtisarian Cathedral. Elias had no idea where his knapsack might be, but his money was sewn into a pouch on the insides of his pants, and his pants were on the floor, right by the bed. So Cork could not keep the grin off of his face. He had just had by far the greatest night of his life, and he found that he didn't even care at all about the knapsack. Furthermore, if it took every last cent he owned, Elias was determined to become an acolyte of squalor. Cork was an 18-year-old man who had spent 85 years searching for exactly this, and now that he had found it, he wasn't about to let it go.